Hello, Elna Baker. Um, my response to her would be that the mic is never cut off in church if you are not fighting against the leaders and the doctrine of the church. So you actually make a, a point for the, the church because if you get up and say, you know, the law we teach about sex, that, that, that it's straight and narrow, that it's strict, that it's only between a man and a woman that, that are married, that's wrong. If you get up and say that, and, and your mic gets cut, I mean, you know, that's not even a big deal if you think about it, because that's, the church is here, you know, one of, one of the main reasons the church is here is to teach the world the laws that you should live concerning sex, in order for you to be happy, in order for your family, and everything like that. If you get up and say, you know, the, I had a dream about the angel Moroni, he told me that, I mean, okay, you know. And that's, you're not speaking against the church. If you get up and say, well, you know, someone cheated me out of money. Actually, I guess you can go 50-50 on that one because maybe you should get your mic cut. So in a way, you, you point out examples where maybe the mic should have been cut. And you say, well, it wasn't. But it's like, you know, I mean... What we don't know is maybe they knew her mom, and maybe they knew that her mom that her mom was going to leave the church or was going to do something like this or had spoken out against the church or the leaders. So maybe they were ready to cut it because they knew that it was going to happen. You know what I mean? Like we don't have that information. Maybe they knew that their mom wasn't really active. I mean, do we know if this girl? Went to, church, went to church, like, does she go every Sunday? And to get up and to say you're not broken, that God doesn't make gay people, it's like, okay, everybody's broken, you know? I mean, that's just what our church teaches, you know? Everybody has faults. Everybody has disabilities, whether it's physical or mental or spiritual or whatever. And so if you think about it, it's kind of like a self-righteous thing to get up there and say, I'm not broken. I don't have anything wrong with me. And it's like, well, the gospel clearly states that if you're gay, something's wrong with you, but the but that's not that doesn't make you different because the gospel teaches that everybody's broken. Being gay is just that's just a normal trial in the eyes of the Lord. Like, okay, you have same-sex attraction. Okay, that's a cross you have to bear. That's a trial you have, you know. And that's what, that's how God sees it. God sees it as a trial. And you know what? Maybe God didn't make you have same-sex attraction. It could have been environmental. It could have been vaccines. It could have been, you know, the mother could have had mercury fillings in her teeth that messed with the DNA while the child was being developed. So in a way, it's like, if you were born, if she was born in a perfect, healthy environment, maybe nobody would be born with same-sex attraction if it was, um, if same-sex attraction is a physical thing, if it's a if it comes from your DNA. Um, so we don't know, we don't know where, we don't know where this doctrine comes from that God made you gay because for one thing, no one is born into a perfect f physical body because if we're going to say God made me gay, well, does that mean because this kind of goes back to the guy who was born blind and the Pharisees said, well, he was born blind because his parents were sinners. 
In other words, he was born with something because of his parents. Now we're saying, people in the gay community, the gay Christians are saying, I was born gay because God wanted me to be. But what does that mean? Because what if it's just physical? You know, like what if what if being gay is just a physical thing? What if it's just, like I said, environmental or just the way you're, something from your parents, you know? Well, if you read the scriptures, it says we're all given crosses, we're all given trials, we're all given weak, we're even weaknesses. Like it specifically says that God gives us weaknesses to overcome and to endure, to make us stronger spiritually. Our spirits are perfect, our, you know, well, I mean, as far as the elements are concerned, our, our spirits are perfect. But, um, yeah, I mean, so to, she's she's purporting a doctrine that's popular, but it doesn't make any sense in the gospel sense because Jesus said the man was born blind so that he might show forth the power of God. And then Jesus proceeded to heal him. So how does that, how do we reconcile that with people who are born gay? Because in the gospel sense, if you're gay, something's wrong with you physically, not spiritually. And that's, and a lot of people take that to be harsh, but it's, in the gospel sense, it's, it's a, it's, it's a curse or it's a, it's a, it's a problem, but it's okay because God can help you, God can help you overcome it. And for some people, they can be healed from it. Just like the man who was born blind, showing forth the power of God. It doesn't really show forth the power of God to just say, well, I was born gay and God made me that way. And it's like, well, what God are you talking about? Because the God of the Bible, and especially the God of Mormonism, condemns the act of homosexuality. He doesn't condemn same-sex attraction, but he definitely condemns the act. So, it, you can't rationally make that connection that God made me into something that if I act on it, at the same time he condemns me for it. So, she is, in, in essence, testifying that the God of Mormonism is hateful and wrong and hates gay people. So if you think about it, it makes sense to cut her off because she's testifying that the God of Mormonism is wrong, that everybody's wrong, that there is no morality, that homosexuality is not to be condemned, and you just have to wonder, like, this is a little kid who's saying having same-sex attraction is not a trial. And you kind of wonder, well, when, when, when she grows up, when anybody grows up, how are they going to decide what is a sin and what isn't? What is moral and what isn't? What's virtuous and what isn't? How, are they going to decide if, well... If it feels right to me, it's right to God. Whoa. I mean, that's that's pretty, that's spiritually dangerous, right? 